so we have seen a problem like this before we have a right triangle and in a right triangle the other two angles add up to 90 degrees and there is an expression for that it's called the angles are complementary in a right triangle when we draw in the altitude belonging to the hypotenuse then we destroy that right angle but we create two new ones if this angle is say beta and this is a right angle that forces this third angle to be what we would call alpha in short the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse splits the triangle into two triangles similar to each other and to the original triangle and now i'm gonna darken the bigger non-right angle so what we have and what we had before is three similar right triangles and we are given two things and we are asked the other three so that's what's similar however previously we would be given what is a and b here we would be given the two sides of a right triangle which means we would have the third side that's not the case here we are very thoroughly given just one side right we do know that the hypotenuse is 1681 units and we also know the two the length of the two line segments into which the hypotenuse is split by this altitude but there is nothing else that we do that seems more difficult so we're going to do as before which is to redraw this picture but this time we rotate we rotate all three triangles in the same way okay so here are three right triangles and let's say these are similar to our original triangle the darkened angle is what we call beta okay so to make this easier we're gonna give these points names okay let's start with this small little triangle so the angles are easily identifiable the smallest one is alpha and the darkened angle is beta and now that we understand the angles we can find the points at the right angle in this little triangle that is point D at the smaller angle alpha in the small triangle is point C and in this little triangle beta is at point B and now we can figure out the sides using the points so BD that was labeled 81 DC is the height labeled H and BC is the side labeled A now this middle triangle is the easiest because this one is not rotated at all corresponding sides are parallel and finally the big triangle at the right angle we have C at the skinnier angle we have A at beta we have B so the triangle is indeed ABC BC is the side labeled A between A and C is the side labeled B and opposite C is the side that is 1681 because that is the length of the full hypotenuse so that should be the first step so now we have three similar triangles and now we start looking for ratios that would enable us to solve for A or B or H but it's pretty hopeless because in the previous type of problems we found a ratio where there were three numbers and just one unknown that's not going to happen here 81 and H 81 and A H and 1600 A and B so H to A 1600 to B that has actually three of them in there 81 and H A to B doesn't work A to H B to 1600 see the issue is that no matter what ratios we express there is always at least two unknowns in there and so the trick is okay but what if we could fix that it's the same unknown and this is a bottleneck in this problem this ratio here 81 and h h and 1600 see there are two sides that are unknown but they are the same so we can write 81 over h is the same as h over 1600 and now after we multiply both sides by 1600 h we get 81 times 1600 equals h squared so h is plus or minus the square root of square root of 81 is 9 the square root of 1600 is 40 so h is plus minus 360 from which we very quickly eliminate the negative answer so h is 360
after this step, we have all kinds of options. We can go back to the original picture and apply the Pythagorean theorem between H and 81 to find A and between H and 1600 to find B. So basically the problem is over. But just for practice, let's look for more ratios because that trick can be applied in several situations. For example, now that we're looking for it, how about B and 1681 and 1600 and B? Again, it's, it's a corresponding pairs of sides where not all three are unknown, but the unknown ones are the same. So again, we can write B over 1600 is 1681 over B. B over 1600, so that's the hypotenuse over the horizontal side, hypotenuse over the horizontal side. And then we get a similar sort of an equation. So we get that B squared is 2,689,600. And when we take the square root, we find that that 2 is a square, and it's a square of 1,640. So again, we have two solutions for B, but we quickly eliminate the negative one because we are looking for a distance, right? Let's see if we can do something similar with A. Do we see two pairs of sides in which everything is known except for A? And if you just look for where A appears, A appears here and here, and that will work. 81 to A, 1681 to A. So now the vertical side over the hypotenuse, the vertical side over the hypotenuse is 81 over A, in the small triangle, and the vertical over the hypotenuse is A over 1681 in the big triangle. Again, we got a very similar type of an equation in which A squared is 136,161. And that 2 is a square. It's the square of 369. And again, out of the two obvious solutions for the equation, we, we rule out the negative one because we are looking for a distance and that gives us A equals 369. So we got that A is 369, B is 1640, and H is 360. Now before we go, let me just make one comment. We have seen equations such as H squared is 81 times 1600, which ultimately led to h being the square root of the product of two other sides. Actually, these are not really sides in the original triangle. This was 81, this was 1600, and h, the height, turned out to be the square root of the product of, the d of these two. Very similarly, we got a squared to be 81 times 1681, which led to A being the square root of 81 times 1681. And the third equation was similar as well. B squared was, oh, so what is A? A was the square root of 81 times 1681. And we had a very similar equation where B squared was the product of 1600 and 1681. Consider now the numbers 2 and 18. Now the average of these two numbers is 2 plus 18 divided by 2, which is 20 over 2, which is 10. As it turns out, there are more than one type of average. So this, this one has a separate name. This is called the arithmetic mean. What is the arithmetic mean? Basically, we take two numbers, 2 and 18, and we sort of even them out with respect to addition. If you take 10 and 10, you get the same sum as with 2 and 18. So it's two numbers that are the same, sort of evened out with the same sum. We can even out these two numbers with respect to multiplication, which means what, what two equal numbers, when we multiply, would, would give the same product. And that, that would be multiply 2 and 18, and when you're done, take the square root. That would be square root of 36, and that is 6. And that is called the geometric mean of 2 and 18. So it's called the geometric mean 
Probably because it comes up a lot in geometry. For example, here H is the geometric mean of the two parts of the hypotenuse that H splits it into. And A is the geometric mean of 81 and the whole hypotenuse. And B is the geometric mean of 1600 and the whole hypotenuse. Thank you for watching.